بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Hello everybody I am Professor Hussam Al-Fallad from Mansoura University, Egypt Our subject today will be hydro maneuvers during vacuum emulsification and this includes hydro dissection and hydro delineation Hydro dissection is classified into conventional or intracortical hydro dissection and the second type which is cortical cleavage hydro dissection and this is the standard one conventional hydro dissection means injection of fluid into the cortical layer of the lens to separate the nucleus from the cortex and the capsule what is cortical cleavage hydro dissection this means a complete separation of the cortical fibers from its capsular attachment and this facilitates complete and easy removal of the cortex hence minimizing post-operative capsular opacification in cortical cleavage hydro bisection the cannula is lifted up tinting the anterior capsule and then BSS is injected this technique produces a clear-cut cleavage plane that separates all the cortex from the capsular bag. Some fluid gets trapped behind the nucleus because of dense cortical adhesions. So, after the fluid wave is completed, the nucleus is depressed with the cannula to release all the trapped fluid into the anterior chamber. Cortical cleavage hydrodissection ensures a complete cortical cleanup. The main objectives of hydro bisection are number one to obtain an easy and complete nucleus mobilization hence its easy rotation and manipulation throughout the FACO procedure thus minimizing capsular and zonular stress. Number two to help easy and complete cortical removal through cortical cleavage hydro dissection. Hence, minimizing post-operative capsular opacification. What are the tools necessary for hydrodissection? Though it is a very essential step during phaco emulsification, yet it is of a low technology. It needs a syringe and a cannula. What is the ideal syringe? Number one, it should be a small syringe. As a general rule, avoid large syringes for intraocular injection. Never use 5cc or 10cc syringes. These are uncontrollable and can induce serious intraocular complications. Also, the 1cc syringe is a weak syringe and you cannot achieve a fluid wave. For better control of injection, a 3cc syringe is the most suitable. This syringe should have a lorry look joint for securing the cannula. Half filling of the syringe with saline is sufficient for a better and smooth control of injection. The hydrodissection cannula should be a small gauge cannula. A 25 gauge is suitable. It should have a smooth edge and the flat tipped cannula is preferable to a rounded one as it easily separates the anterior capsular edge to facilitate its tinting. Now, what are the rules of hydrodissection? Number one, use the main incision. Never use the sideboard to avoid severe elevation of the AC pleasure and rupture of the psoriatic capsule. Introduce the tip of the cannula under the anterior capsular edge, and the tip of the cannula should be perpendicular to the anterior capsular edge. Then, tint the anterior capsule. That's to say, elevate the anterior capsular edge slightly. This is a very essential point to achieve cortical cleavage hydrodissection. The cannula tip should pass deep in the capsular fornix to allow forward wave of fluid during injection. Otherwise, there is backward flow into the anterior chamber and insufficient hydrodissection. Before BSS injection, always remove some viscoelastic from the anterior chamber. The volume of fluid to be injected should be small. Injection should be rapid 
with controlled pressure to get a dissecting wave of fluid. All the time observe the propagation of the fluid wave and if you fail to get a fluid wave try again in another quadrant. This dissecting wave will shear the adhesions between the lens capsule and the cortex. As hydrodissection induces a small degree of capsular block, decompress the capsular bag with the heel of the cannula. This helps propagation of the fluid wave anteriorly, completing the hydrodissection and preventing capsular block out. Now, what are the sure signs of hydrodissection? Any one or more of the following should be considered as sure sign of hydrodissection. Number one, direct visualization of the propagating fluid wave. This is easily seen in eyes with good red reflex. Number two, anterior bulge of the nucleus due to trapped fluid behind the nucleus. It is associated with more visualization of the anterior capsular edge and slight pupillary dilatation. Number three, hydroprolapse of the nucleus edge out of the capsular bay. In this situation, try to reposit the nucleus again into the capsular bag to achieve regular endocapsular phacoemulsification. What are the contraindications of hydrodissection? Hydrodissection is absolutely contraindicated in open lens capsule, as in cataract due to penetrating injuries and in cases of Argentinian flag sign. However, hydrodissection is relatively contraindicated in congenital posterior polar cataract. There is no need for hydrodissection in cases of intumescent cataract as the cortex is hydrated and the nucleus rotates easily. How can the rixis size affect the hydrodissection? A small rixis facilitates fluid wave propagation as it traps the nucleus inside the capsular bag, while in large rixis, BSS easily escapes out into the anterior chamber and the nucleus may be hydroprolapsed outside the capsular bag. Again, I remind you, never do hydrodissection in compromised rixis. Now, what about hydrodissection and dense cataract? The problems here are multiple. Number one, the scars or the minimal cortex and nucleus, which act as a cushion buffering the intracapsular pressure. Number two, the hard large nucleus can induce rapid capsular block, hence threatening the posterior capsule. Also, or number three, difficult visualization of the fluid wave. So, what are the precautions that should be considered in such cases? This include number one, larger than usual rixis size to facilitate easy egress of trapped fluid. Number two, inject as a little fluid as you can. Number three, perform multi quadrant hydrodissection and all the time observe the anterior bulge of the nucleus. Also, decompress the anterior chamber and the capsular bag frequently. Hydrodelineation This means separation of the endonucleus from the epinucleus. What is the value of hydrodelineation? Is to delineate the nuclear edge. How can I do it? Pass the cannula tip inside the epinucleus till you feel resistance and inject a small volume of BSS, a golden ring will appear which means hydrodelineation. Is it essential in every case? For the beginner, it helps to create a buffer zone to prevent posterior capsular injury. Anyhow, 
Avoid hydrodelineation in soft cataract like grade 1 to facilitate removal of the epineumis. Thank you for your attention, waiting you on the next lecture.